Welcome back to another mug rug weaving tutorial from Wild Ginger Hand Weaving. In my last video, I explained the basics of how croak broad works, how to weave it, and how a pattern design comes together. In today's video, I'll be sharing a more complicated croak broad pattern, but the structure remains exactly the same, and so does the process. So just like last time, to get our croak broad pattern, we'll be cycling through three different sheds, or openings, between the warp threads. And so the whole time, we'll just be cycling through one, two, three. And we'll repeat that over and over and over again till we've croaked broad. Again, just like last time, our pattern consists of visual blocks of color. So each time I cycle through these three sheds, I'll have one arrangement of colors that I'll repeat three times in a row to build up a visual pattern block. And then I can switch my order of colors around to get a new sequence to weave the next pattern block and so on. That's exactly the same as what we'll be doing today, but our order of colors is a bit more freeform than it was last time. So let's get started. My pattern actually starts out with a solid block of dark blue in all three sheds. So to start it off, I'm going to add my blue in here and just wrap the end around to keep it secure in there. And that is the main difference between this pattern and the one I did in my previous video. There are a lot more starts and stops in the colors that I'm using. Okay, now I'll continue to put my dark blue in sheds two and three. Now that's one cycle through and I'll repeat those three picks two more times. The pattern diagram on your screen just tells me the order of colors to use. So that first row was my first block. Now I'm moving on to my second block. And so my chart tells me dark, dark, green. So I'll be weaving my dark color for the second block in sheds one and two. And then I'll add my green for the third shed or third pick. I usually start my colors out all on the right side just out of pure habit but it doesn't really matter because they will get mixed up as you weave along and place them in different sheds. Okay, now I'll repeat this new sequence two more times. Looking at my pattern chart, you can see that we're already done with green. We won't use it for the next couple blocks. So I'm going to cut it off and weave it in at this point. So I'll trim it and then wrap it around the edge thread. I am using floating salvages today. Now you can see that there is some buildup here where I have two strands of the green. And as you continue adding and cutting colors through the whole pattern, that will tend to build up at the edges. So if you want to avoid that extra buildup for edges as tidy as possible, I'm actually going to unweave it just here at the edge and taper my yarn. In order to do that, I'm going to use precision scissors that have very pointy tips. And I'm going to go in here and split the plies apart and just trim out one ply at a time. This is a four ply yarn, so I'm trimming two plies out before it even gets to the edge. And then I'll beat it, and when I wrap it around, I could trim one of the plies, but I'm just gonna leave it be. So there I don't have nearly as much buildup as I did before. I do have a loose end of this th thread where I cut the ply, but I can easily tuck that in when I'm all done weaving at the end. My next pattern block starts with light blue in shed one, and you can taper it when you begin 
as well as when you end a thread. So here I've pre-tapered this one as well by trimming the plies. And I'll just tuck that around the edge thread. And this block has dark blue in sheds two and three. My next block has light blue in sheds one and two and dark blue just in three. And for my next block, I'm actually going back to repeat the block before last. So light blue goes just on one, and dark blue goes in two and three again. Now I'm done with my light blue color, so I really should have trimmed it off right after I wove it in this last round of the block. I wasn't looking ahead to my pattern, so shame on me. That's why it always helps to look at your pattern and look ahead so you know when you're going to stop using a color. Now I could just leave it hanging there and weave it in at the end, but I'm actually going to unweave two rows. There we go. So that I'll have an easier time weaving the end in neatly. Okay. So again, I'm going to take it back, split the plies, and then wrap it around the edge. Okay, and now that I've tucked the end of my light blue in, I need to remember to repeat those two more picks that I unwove. So then dark blue goes in shed two. And dark blue goes in shed three. Okay, at this point, I'm ready to start my new block with dark blue in sheds one and two, and I'll reintroduce green in shed three. You can simply continue following the pattern that I have on the screen. Let's do some weaving. Okay, at this point, I am exactly halfway through the mug rug. This would be a great time to check, measure it, and make sure it's just over two and a half inches. 
to get you the length that you want when you flip the pattern around. Uh, I can also check it against the one that I've already woven and yep, I am pretty much right in line with what I wove before. So this one should come out all right. Now from here on out, I'm going to reverse the pattern and weave the same blocks that I've woven up to this point, but in the opposite order. And when I'm all done, I'll have my completed mug rug. And this is the pattern that results. You can get very different effects just by using different colors. This here is basically the same pattern in a purple gradient. The only difference is one extra pattern block in the very center. And then this here is the same pattern, but with the dark and light colors reversed. So you can see you can get very different effects just by changing your colors without even changing the pattern at all. So thank you for watching. In future videos, I'll share a few more tips and tricks for weaving croak broad, different methods of weaving the edges, some design considerations, and how to weave croak broad on a rigid heddle. So stay tuned. I hope to see you back next time. And in the meantime, happy weaving.